Nuno, are you proud of your players today? Was that a thoroughly professional performance? Yes, uh, it didn't start very well. Something that we have to look. We we expect Newcastle to, to come really strong, and we didn't be able to sustain that. But we react very well. We react very well. Uh, we set down the game. We play really good, and we achieve good goals. Spurs didn't have to do much to score against us. Their lives were problem. You know, it was a bit too easy, and. Um, and unfortunately, it's been a problem we've had for a while now. And just finally on Harry Kane, he's got his first Premier League goal of the season. I know you weren't worried about it, but is it still a relief that he's off and running? No, it's good. It's good. It's good for us. It's good for Harry. But we're not. The game goes. What Harry does for us is go beyond the goals that he scores, uh, and he's going to score. He's natural talent. I'll carry on as best I can until I hear otherwise. And the owners have been very, very respectful. I have to say that the way they've conducted themselves in the last week or so, and um, and I'll you know, so I hear different. I'll go to work again tomorrow and prepare for next week. Uh, well, we told you uh, about the fan who was taken ill during that game, and there's a positive update uh, on that person. They are stable and responsive in hospital. So, uh, positive news there. Mm. Um, as far as the as far as the game is concerned. So, so many emotions swirling around that stadium. From a Newcastle perspective, what did you make of it? Well, there was so much hope and excitement around the place, and rightly so. <clears throat> but unfortunately, it was the same old Newcastle on the pitch again. Um, although they did start the game brilliantly, they, they just couldn't maintain it. It was exactly what you want from the start of a game. Fans behind you, men running forward, getting in the box, overlaps. There you go, there you see the numbers. Brilliant goal from Wilson, good to have him back. They've missed him. Richie setting the tone, look, not just one tackle up again, bam, exactly, look how many players they've got around the ball. Really, really good start, fans getting right behind him, you start thinking to yourself, this could be a tough day for Tottenham, because the energy was brilliant around the stadium, everybody up for it. Hayden, 50-50, middle of the pitch, exactly what you want, that gets the fans going. And the first 15 minutes, they did really, really well and controlled the game, but then Tottenham realised quite quickly what, was, what they needed to do. They stopped trying to play through, and played longer balls. The first long ball they played in the game, they ended up scoring from. When there's no pressure on the ball, you have to drop. And the Newcastle back four were making the wrong decisions. There was a lack of communication. They were all over the place at times. Of course, the midfield needs a help and sometimes drop off. No when to press and no when to drop off. But <clears throat> the centre halves can see everything. And they should be the ones communicating, pulling the centre midfielders back. But they kept playing this high line. And against Tottenham, with the players they've got, that's the worst thing you can do. Great to start that way, but then you have to see what's happening around you. Kane getting in behind there, onside, comfortably, we saw from... And it's a simple ball from Hoiberg. None of them looked. No, and look at this staggered line. Look, they're all ball-watching. Talking about one of the best strikers in the world, by the way. Again, Romero, I thought his long, uh, his long passing today was excellent. Kane nearly getting in again on this occasion. And it's about decision-making in a game when you... I mean, look... Two centre-halves ahead of each other, playing offside, doesn't know where the full-back is behind him, spacing behind again, what a ball from Kane, but you, you have to sometimes manage the players around you and, and the tactics in the game yourself. You know, yes, you manage your sets up a plan, but sometimes when you can see you keep getting done on the long ball, you've got to drop off as a team, and the communication was poor. It was championship defending. But, uh, but Steve Bruce said, the same old problems for them. It's balanced... From the beginning of the season, he's had the balance wrong. He's tried to play more on the front foot, but they've been wide open, conceding goals too regularly. Yes, they've had more shots and more chances, been a bit better on the eye, but you can't concede goals the way they are and expect to stay in the, uh, stay in the division. So if he's saying, same old Newcastle, you're saying back to the old Harry Kane? Yeah, he was showing glimpses today, Harry Kane, I think. You know, he's come in for a lot of criticism, Harry Kane, for dropping deep and maybe not getting in the areas to score the goals. He scores his first goal today, and I think this is, shows his intelligence. You know, he can see right along the line. He times it brilliantly, and nice little bend the run, but he doesn't panic, and he puts it in the back of the net. And you see him here, he's shown a desire to get involved. He wants to make things happen. Instead of just waiting for the ball to come to him, he's taking control. OK, they don't get anything from it. Brilliant, he's leading the line. He gets sun up in support, and he's in the middle of the box, and he's always on the move. It doesn't come to him in the end. It goes to Lucas Moura, who takes a shot but he's wanting to get involved. His body shape's good, it's positive, and you see it here, you know, we've already seen the run, but he's ready to go. He wants the ball played in front of him. Son reacts to that. It's a brilliant cross and a, and a really good finish. But this is... People have questioned his hunger, his yeah. desire. Does he want to be there? 
you can see there he's holding up, he's fighting. It's a really good foul because they've got the overload down the right-hand side. He wants, he's playing on the shoulder, he wants to get in behind. He has a quick look, he spots in Dumbelli, and he's on the move again. You can see him hand in the air, he's wanting the ball to the back post. You can't blame in Dumbelli for taking the shot, and this is brilliant. You know, he comes to link the play, nice little ball round the corner, he doesn't watch it, he gets after it. He makes a brilliant run down the outside of Hoybier. He should see him and reverse it into his path. He doesn't, he picks out Son, who could maybe play it to Harry Kane, but you can't blame him for that. And you can see from the average position, he's leading the line for Tottenham. That is where he's at his best. You, to Tottenham fans will look at it. I think fans of football will look at that, that graphic on the average formation and go, every single player there looks exactly where they should be. <laughs> and Dombele's the furthest of the three midfielders. Kane's the furthest of the three forwards. When you see it like that, it looks simple. Yeah, it does. And I think <laughs> when, Har when Harry Kane's playing as the, the lead striker and leading the line, it brings Son, it brings more into the play. And Dembele was excellent today, some of his touches, but he was getting an, an advanced position. And it, it was the perfect you know, formation, the perfect way of playing it for Tottenham after the, the, the shaky start. We heard the earlier views on the takeover, right? Earlier on in the show, spoke to Alan Shearer about it last night, the positives and the negatives about it and questions that will be asked about where the money comes from. So let's let's park the, the takeover side of it and look at it from the football side of it. What, what do Newcastle do? Because it's not as simple, is it, as just going out and buying a load of players in January? Recruitment is going to be massively important. Look, for me, the, the biggest area they should be looking at in January is, is loans. And I'm talking to get top players who can make a difference to get, get them out of the position they're in. If you want to get real quality coming into the club, they're not going to come on a permanent in January at the risk of playing in the Championship the ne next season. I don't think. The best players. Now, you might be able to get one or two on loan who come to showcase themselves or try and see what it's like in Newcastle and to play first-team football because some of the bigger squads in Europe have a lot of surplus players who are much better than the players Newcastle have got. So they've got to be cute in the loan market. You might get one or two permanent players but again that's very difficult in January because I mean Tarkovsky is a good example because mm. he's going to be out of contracts you'd be ob obviously be at more chance of prizing him away and he knows what it's like to play Premier League and Championship if they need to go down and probably got the desire to do it but it's going to be a really difficult January window for them because the other big problem they've got is that if you're a selling club and you know this club yeah. have got the wealth they've got you're going to be unreasonable and loans stop you getting players going just for the money, which, yes. you, which, which you don't want to... Evidently, you don't want to happen. Yeah, but you have to... If you're going to go down that route, it has to be guys that, that want to go and do well, not, not guys that other clubs are trying to get rid of and get them off the wage bill. They have to be want to go there and, and be successful. It's a huge task for them. Uh, right, 